you know what, you can change your life, hmm. right? So through meditation, through understanding your body, through understanding yourself. And if you want to make a change, you can do it. Hey, I'm Harrison. When was the last time you had a deep, meaningful conversation with somebody? If it's been a while, don't worry, you're in the right place. This podcast is designed to open your mind to new perspectives and topics in the realms of health, personal growth, and well, life. Welcome to the Let's Talk About Life podcast. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the Let's Talk About Life podcast. My name is Harrison King, and I am so happy that you're joining me here today. It's a special episode. We're back for season two. This is the first episode of season two. Now, I bet most of you didn't know we were doing this in seasons. Well, we're going to do it this way, so it's a little easier for me to make sure that I'm really getting the content out to you that we want to get out to you, the, the highest quality that this show can be and doing it in seasons is going to help make that happen. So we've got a bunch of great episodes coming your way and we've got some new things happening this season. First of all, of course, the artwork has changed a little bit. You probably noticed that a little sleeker, you know, changed it up a little bit. Um, got the new website so you can head on over to harrisonkingofficial.com and you'll be able to find the podcast, all the show notes and there's a whole a whole section of the website dedicated to that. So uh, make sure to check that out. And the big exciting thing is we're on Patreon. If you head on over to patreon.com forward slash let's talk about life podcast, you'll be able to sign up for that. And what does that mean, Harrison? You know, you might not know what Patreon is. Well, if you uh, go become a patron, then you're going to get every episode a week early. All right. Every episode a week early. So this one that you're listening to right now, it's already out. It was out a week ago. Now, no, none of you knew that. But, but it is. So that means right now, next week's episode is already out. That's right. It's already out there. And on top of that, you're going to get an extra mini episode every week. So you're getting two episodes of the Let's Talk About Life podcast. Uh, and the great thing about it is that everything that is made from the Patreon this season is going right back into the show. I'm letting you know that right now. Full transparency. It's going right back into the show so we can get some incredible guests on here for you, um, up the quality and just keep it coming uh, towards you because making your personal growth a priority is so important and you're doing that by here being here and I want to make it as good as possible for you. All right, so head on over to our Patreon at patreon.com forward slash let's talk about life podcast. And the other thing is that if you're here, you're obviously taking your health seriously and, and want to make yourself feel better, you know, and maybe look a little better. So I want to uh, let you in on a little secret here. I got these glasses. All right. These are my natural blocks, uh, blue light blocking glasses from natural Academy. All right. And uh, obviously they look great, but if you want to improve your health, these are something you definitely need to get blue light blocking glasses are, are, you can get them anywhere. I mean, you can get them on Amazon, but those, those things, they're not, they're not blocking very much. They're blocking like 12 to 15%. I think the blue light spectrum, the harmful blue light spectrum. And these ones right here, they're getting 88 to 100% of the blue light spectrum. So they're the best quality uh, blue light blocking glasses in Canada. And if you're not from Canada, it doesn't matter. You can still get them and they are high quality. And why do you want to block out blue light? Well, it's the harmful blue light from screens. If you're on a screen all day and then, you know, fluorescent, fluorescent lights and stuff like that, the artificial lighting. It can really interrupt your circadian rhythm and all kinds of different things. So by by wearing these inside, you're protecting your eyes. You're going to improve your sleep. Oh, man, there's so many different things. I've I've improved my my sleep and my headaches have gone away. So you definitely want to pick up some of these. You can head on over to naturoacademy.com, which is N-A-T-U-R-O academy.com. And you can use the code Harrison10 when you check out and you can get 10% off. All right. So you want to head on over there. Grab a pair of these guys and you can uh, you can look nice and cool along with me and improve your health, right? I am so excited to share this episode with you today. Obviously, it's the first episode of the season. It's exciting, but this story is phenomenal. I sat down with Terry Ma. He's a good friend of my dad's and I've gotten to know him over the years and his story is phenomenal. He had stage four pancreatic cancer. And obviously, if you know anything about cancer, that is not that's not a good thing right it's pretty scary and he has overcome it and a largely to do with his his mind which sounds crazy we talk all about it but it really shows you his story really shows you the power of your mind and this is such a neat perspective great um just story to share with you and i really hope you enjoy it so let's dive in to my chat with terry ma there's some people everybody has experiences obviously but there's some people i think that 
can really speak to certain aspects of life that other people can't. And, and, uh, and this man has had quite the experience with cancer. Um, and he actually just said, if you don't mind me sharing, he just said before, uh, we were talking, he said, I almost died like last year, uh, I guess. So not too, not too long ago. And he's had two bouts of it. So Recently, yeah. Terry Ma, yeah. thank you for being on here. And why don't you share a little bit about yourself and then we can get into some. Hey, thanks for having me, Harrison. It's a, a pleasure. It's my first podcast. It's and, a big day. Uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, very big day. Hopefully we can, uh, I can share some information about my, um, my journey and, and hopefully we can uh, provide some hope or, or provide some insight to some for people sure. in regards to, uh, the treatment options that I went through and, and just give them some hope that the cancer yeah. can be beaten. So, um, give you a quick background. Uh, I'm from, I'm from Saskatoon. Uh, I moved to Calgary, Alberta, where I am right now, but over a little over three and a half years ago. And in that time, actually, um, my, when we're moving to Calgary, uh, relocated for work, um, my wife's, my mom's father actually was diagnosed with stage four lung cancer and, and they only gave him six months to a year to live. And he was in Saskatoon as well. So we sold everything of his and, um, brought him with us and he moved into Calgary with us. And it was, it was, uh, it was a real tough year, obviously. Um, you know, he was, uh, starting at a certain point and, um, to see him yeah. deteriorate, month after month it was um it was, it was a tough thing to see especially for my young kids my young kids my kids were five and yeah. seven at the time and uh yeah not a great experience um anyways uh, to get back to my story uh, unfortunately he passed away and then uh, we, had, we had his funeral that type of thing and it was it was about two weeks later you know what i said i had this small um stomach discomfort um, upon mm-hmm. eating, but it would go away. And that, that was kind of going on for about a year. And so I decided to go to the doctor to get it checked out. And she's like, okay, you know, it's probably just some stomach issues. You probably need a probiotic, that type of thing. And, um, anyways, she sent me to get a few tests and, uh, lo and behold, I had stage four pancreatic yeah, wow. cancer. Yeah. Uh, you know, it was, that's one of the big yeah. killers, right? You know, obviously, you know, the, from a celebrity standpoint, uh, Alex Trebek has mm-hmm. it right now and he's, he's still around, but Patrick Swayze fought the, fought the good fight and then quite, uh, didn't quite make it. But, um, so, you know, the prognosis with stage four pancreatic cancer is never, yeah. it's never good. Uh, just because the treatment options out there are very limited and, and mm-hmm. not effective. So, that was, that was three and a half years ago. I'm here today, yeah. which was great. Um, uh, you know what, it was an absolute shock to me. You know, I, I, I felt a little stomach discomfort, but I felt good otherwise. Right. So my wife and I, we cried for a yeah. week and then, uh, you know, I'm a very positive person, a very solution oriented person. And we both sat down and, and said, what are we going to do? Yeah. Let's figure this out. You know, uh, I said, I'm not leaving. My kids mm-hmm. are too young. Uh, I want to be there for my kids. I want to be there for family. I want to live for a long time. Yeah. You know, I've had yeah. a great life. So why not continue it? Um, I'm not going to let this knock sure. me down or slow me down. You know, um, we see too many people, patients with cancer or, or illnesses where they, uh, they let, they let it victimize mm-hmm. them. And, and, and mentally they just, they fall apart. You know, when, once they get diagnosed with something, it's like, Bam. You know, I've seen people die within week, yeah. a week, two weeks after being diagnosed, right? They just, they give up, right? And, um, and believe me, you know what, uh, the journey I've been through, there's, there's a lot of things that we've done we can get into, but um, you know what, there's a lot of hope. There's a lot of great things out there that you can be doing to give you the best chance For sure. of survival, right? And yeah, so yeah, what did we do? We, um, we, we, my wife did a lot of research. I call her my, <laughs> <Wow>. <laughs> she, she, did, she did a lot of the work. Um, and it was, it was surprising. Um, a friend of mine from my hometown, his, his sister had stage four breast cancer out in Moose Jaw, Saskatchewan. And she was given about six months mm-hmm. a year to live. And she started looking for options and she decided to go to doc, a gentleman called Dr. Cleef, an oncologist in Vienna, Austria. 
And she did her protocol there for about two months. And lo and behold, she was wow. cancer free, which was mm-hmm. amazing. Amazing. And so it was one of those things, you know what, uh, I really wanted to do conventional treatment here in Canada. Unfortunately, um, you know, the options just weren't uh, what right. we were looking for. And uh, they were very good here, very accommodating, but uh, it wasn't the long-term um, longevity, I guess, lifespan that I was looking for. We wanted to do more new, latest technology, give me the best. I felt good. So I, why not travel? Let's, let's go tackle this. And then worst case scenario, we'll come back and do conventional treatment right. here in Calgary. So we went to see Dr. Cleef. I spent a total of three months there. And um, yeah, he does a combination of uh, immunotherapy, which is the, the new meds in regards to that's having a really strong uh, effect against against cancer. Uh, he does some low dose chemotherapy, but very limited, so you don't have a lot of side effects of the chemotherapy. Um, he's also co- combines it with a lot of natural path type of uh, supplements and treatments yeah. like uh, high dose vitamin C. Um, I was on a yogurt. To be honest, I was even on a birth control pill. Yeah. Harris, <laughs> there you go. Yeah, I wasn't gonna. Get, I wasn't gonna That's get right. pregnant. <laughs> Well, it's quite the, uh, Uh, it really is quite the story because the first thing that I think of and that I've thought, and I haven't heard this directly from you, but I assume based on knowing who you are, that a lot of this, and now I wouldn't say all of it, but a lot of it has to do with your mindset throughout this whole process. And you, you already said that, and I think you would agree, right? Um, I do want to speak to that a little bit because I've heard, you know, all, there's all kinds of stories about things like that where you know if you believe that you have something right and then you think you're gonna die you will even if you don't have it sometimes so like i mean your mind is so powerful right and you were how did you cope with that and stay in that good mindset i guess is the question you know i'm I'm glad i'm glad you asked that because it's it's a it was a huge part of my treatment you know dr cleef was more the um uh, naturopath uh, um uh, pharmaceutical combination Mm -hmm. kind of thing you know feeding you with with, with meds type of thing, but something that really we got involved in and my wife did was something called body talk. And, um, you know, I even went to, I came back, I came back to Saskatoon and took a weekend class in body wow. talk. And, and really it's, it's, it's all about getting in, in touch with yourself, right. And understanding yourself. And, and one of the big things that I learned from it was, you know what, I, I stopped for a second and I said, sorry, guys, I was talking to my body you know, obviously I've done something wrong in the last so many years that we've triggered this cancer to come. And, and, and I apologize and I'm sorry what I did, um, but let's change it and let's fix it together. Right. And then, and then, you know, just by having that framework and, and having that communication with my talking to my organs, you know, people may sound it's corny, but it was, it's absolutely amazing what you can do with, with the power of the mind. And uh, I focused on, you know, us being as a team, as one unit, um, let's work hard and, and let's yeah. change things. Right. And, and, and obviously my, my life had changed. My, my eating habits changed. My, my spirituality right. changed. Um, you know, I did a lot of meditation. Meditation was absolutely amazing. Yeah. Amazing. Um, I also went to a week-long conference in Mexico with Dr. Joe Oh, Dispenza. you did do that. Sure if you know oh, wow. Yes. It was absolutely amazing. He really taught me how, um, how meditating and, and manifestation of, of good things and man- manifestation of the future and, and understanding gratitude and appreciating gratitude in your life, how much more my life got simpler mm-hmm. but so much happier. It was, it was absolutely amazing. Um, you know, the first, the first day we were there, Dr. Joe did, uh, you know, he talked about, you know, the energy in the world and we're all made up of energy and things like that and, and how we can change our energy. And, and that's a really important thing is people think, Oh, I got cancer. I can't change it. Right. But when you put, in my opinion, when you put the mind and body the pharmaceutical, the naturopath, when you put that all together, that's going to give you the best chance 
of survival, especially in my situation. You know, the, right now, I presently have no cancer in my pancreas, no cancer in my lymph nodes, no cancer in my stomach. And I had uh, 22 tumors in my liver. Um, I presently have one tumor in my liver that uh, has shrunk, shrunk from two centimeters down to five wow. millimeters. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. So it's uh, my oncologist, uh, Dr. Cleef, as well as my one in Calgary, they're like, oh, dude, what yeah. are you doing? Keep doing uh, it, right? <laughs> Yeah, keep, keep doing it right and and i um uh, i'm stable right now everything is great uh, i still meditate every day my wife meditates every day our kids meditate you know um I, i've really learned to uh, slow down and and appreciate life one of the first meditations we did in, in mexico was was about yeah. gratitude and uh, dr joe says um just try and feel the, the notice the things around you. You know how we get busy, Harrison, yeah. in our daily life. You know, we miss uh, things. Yeah. We, miss, we miss a ton of things. And and then you talked about abundance. And abundance, you know, a lot of people think abundance. Oh, I'm gonna I'm gonna manifest uh, right. winning the lottery, right? But really, abundance is yeah. happiness. You know, wealth in so many different ways, whether it be health and and just feeling good or things like that. And, and we came back from that med- three hour meditation. And I came back to the resort and my kids were there and it was so amazing that my son came up to me and he just hugged me hmm. and you know, he hugs me, but he just, he wouldn't let go of me for like 20 wow. minutes. So we just walked in and at that moment in time, I said, I stopped and I was like, wow, this is absolutely amazing. And you know, my previous life, I guarantee you, I would have went, Okay, let's go. Let's go right. do this. Let's go. Okay, aren't you supposed to go to bed? You know that type of thing. Oh, you know, all right. you know, it's just uh, one of the little things. And and I did I did manifest during that manifest uh, that um, uh, sorry, the Doctor Joe there. And I said some abundance, right? And I just put abundance out there. And what was funny I was at a resort where it every morning I had to get up. I had to be there at six mm-hmm. o'clock in the morning. And it cost me well, $25 US a cab ride to, to get to the resort because it was a different resort. And the second day after that, I saw some people who were, they were walking and at the same time, at like five in the morning, they had the same uh, name tags on. And I said, hey, do you guys want to share a cab? And they said, no, we have a car. Why don't we drive you every day and come wow. with us? And I'm like, that is absolutely yeah. fantastic. And, and it was so amazing that one, even one step further, uh, they're from Chile. And they said, Terry, I'm glad we met you. Our son is actually coming to Calgary and going to be a ski instructor in Banff next month. Can you meet him and show him around? And Because we were just right. were worried about him. But now that we know we have a friend and yeah. close, I can go help him out. Mm-hmm. We we're there and it just made them they're like of absolutely and uh made them feel more comfortable but you know what just that one meditation just created a awesome level of yeah. abundance uh gratitude and and a connection an energy connection that was absolutely amazing i'm so excited right now because i haven't shared this with you but first of all joe dispenza like his work is ridiculous incredible i know all about it um I agree. And yeah. uh, for anybody that doesn't, if they're listening, he is, um, well, he's a doctor, right? But he does a lot of work, right? It's all mental and, and uh, spiritual stuff like healing. So I've heard all kinds of stories when he talks and, and like literally will make people, you know, like lose illnesses on the spot and things like that. And, like, and they'll actually check and it's gone. Like there's people just with the power of their mind and, and using meditation stuff like this. There's other, other things I believe he does as well. Right. But, but a lot of it is, is that anyway, it's phenomenal. Check him out. Um, but this is so exciting because meditation is a big part of my life and, and, and I'm always trying to talk about it and everything because I really think it can, it can change your life. And this is actually a great conversation for me to have at this very moment in time, because I've been a slacking a little bit. I've been a little bit of a, a little bit of a rut with the meditation, um, practice and, and it just inc- like makes me want to just make sure I get back at it because it's so, I mean, I always feel wonderful and, and I mean, just, I know the power that it has, um, and what you're saying there is just, it's just phenomenal. It makes me so happy just to hear that that's what one of the big parts of it was and that you're, you're sticking with it because I'm sure like, how do you feel now versus pre-cancer? Like if you were to compare yourselves, 
um, health wise and just happiness and everything. I, you know what, Harrison, again, I'm glad you asked that. I, it's, I feel absolutely so happy inside. It's amazing. I've, I've taken a lot of the stress out of my life. I, I, I enjoy every single moment with mm-hmm. my family. You know, I was out driving the other day and uh, I was doing some Joe, to, I was doing some of the breathing that he was yeah. asking us to do. Uh, and, and that really helps calm me down. But anyways, it was being in Calgary, Alberta, the mountains are beautiful, that type of thing. I'm from Saskatchewan. I miss the old, you know, uh, yeah. wheat fields. And I found when I was out, outside of Calgary and I just stopped for like 20 minutes. And so I saw this wheat field and it was absolutely amazing. And it just gave me such amazing mm. energy in my body. Um, but that's how I feel. I still feel like that mm. every day. And, um, you know, it's, 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 it's hard yeah. to explain, but, uh, um, w- when you take all the external pressures in life and, and, and stress and you just focus on the good things around you, your life is going to be exponentially so mm. much yeah. better, so much better. Yeah. yeah. And, and that's what meditating has helped me, help me s- slow down I hate to say it, slow down and smell yeah. the roses well that's what it is right at the essence of it um yeah. the, what i was gonna ask is what have you the major obviously there's like meditation in some of these things but are there are a couple of major changes that you can you recognize that that you either had to do to help treat um you know what was going on or that you've adopted after like what i'm saying you know it's different than what your life was before what are some of the big changes? Obviously, meditation. Are you eating differently? Are you exercising more? Is it just a lot of that being present? Um, or what would you what would you say if you are to think about it? You know, to be honest, I, I have I, I I work out a little bit. Um, it's, it wasn't a big part of my regiment. Eating, I never ate bad, but I um, I didn't really change my diet to the extreme that a lot of yeah. other people do. Um, the the again the big thing was meditation yeah. and, and under understand my body and trying to uh, understand the world and understand the world around me and, and just soak mm-hmm. it all in and appreciate it. And gratitude is such a big thing that my wife and I, and how do you on. practice that and regularly? Like, are, do you have practices that you're doing um, on a day to day basis or just keeping it in your mind or how do you, yeah, you know what? Uh, I do it in my yeah. mind a lot, but um, my wife has actually written, she wrote a yes. book about my story. It's called the day the cancer quit. Yeah. It's on Amazon feel free to order. It's a, it's, it's a, a great book about my journey. And she's also written a gratitude journal mm-hmm. as well. So we follow that journal regularly. We open it every day and end of the day, we write down, you know, what were, what were three of the most, one of the greatest moments of the day. And we remember the positive, great moments. Mm-hmm. We write them down. And, and it's just a little, it's something you do mm-hmm. every day. And it's just, absolutely amazing how it reinforces the happy things that have happened in your that day because you forget a lot right and how it's you're right with with the hustle and bustle of the life that we have we got to go here we got to go there you know if people miss these small beautiful things and i tell you it's the small small things that build up that'll make your life amazing um what are the what's something that you would say to people because there's a lot of people when you talk about this stuff like joe dispenza what he's up doing things if you're not really looking into it and you're just kind of hearing about it, a lot of people are like, oh, that's just, you know, that's fake or whatever. Like they don't believe in it. What would you say to somebody like that, um, that, that is just kind of, you know, brushing it aside saying this isn't, it's not doing anything. You guys are all crazy, whatever. You know what? Yeah. That's, um, Hey, I was that guy, <sighs> right? My wife introduced me. <laughs> I'm like, this is not going to work. This is, this is garbage, you know, that type of thing. But you know what? You can change your life, hmm. right? So through meditation, through understanding your body, through understanding yourself. And if you want to make a change, you can do it. There's a lot of work involved in it, but you can do it. You know, a lot of our habits, a lot of our, our tendencies are a lot of, um, they're all pre-programmed in, you know, since, uh, you know, up to like, you know, age eight yeah. or something like that. I think Dr. Joe says it's all pre-programmed, right? We're in autonomic mode. Right. But if you want to make a change, you mm-hmm. can do it. You can absolutely yeah. do it. When you found out that you have stage four pancreatic cancer, obviously the big blow, like to 
life just wow but you were like this is i don't want to i'm not going is what you said just now um did that thought ever change in your mind or were you just positive that you were not like leaving this planet that you were going to do like it wasn't it wasn't even an option that you were going to um you know succumb to the cancer there's always there's always anybody with cancer you'll find out anybody with disease you'll have points in time where you think of about course. death and you think about passing on, right? I, I bet you 99% of the time, um, I knew I was going to mm. live. I absolutely knew I was going to live. You gonna didn't hope this. so. I knew you were I hoping was. you knew. Is the, even just the, I knew. the language I, I knew. you know, it didn't. Yeah, I didn't really, you know, go down that dark, that dark circle and think, oh, I'm, mm. I'm done. You know, I'm done. I'm not trying this anymore. I'm not, I'm done. No, I was, I was, I just kind of lived my everyday life with a little bit of pain, a little bit of this, a little bit of that, but I never did at one point think I was going to die. Yeah. I firmly believed that I was going to beat this. I firmly believe that I beat it already. You know, I was at a point, um, I still at a point where, uh, you know, I drink water and I go, Oh, that water's awesome. It's killing cancer right now. Right. Yeah. Oh, I'm, I'm eating this. I'm eating broccoli. Oh, that's killing cancer. Oh, I mean, I'm bagging chips. I don't care if it's a can of pop, right? A yeah. big can of root beer. That's killing cancer. Yeah. It's, yeah. It's just a frame yeah. of mind that I was in the whole time. And, and it was, uh, and it wasn't arrogance. No. It wasn't confidence. It's just what I believe. It's what I believe. This is in. so interesting you know? to me because this is a, a, kind of how just automatically my mind works with all kinds of things, um, things that I want or, you know, to happen in my life or whatever, I just automatically believe that it's already true. And I find it interesting you say this because um, even just like I said, the language that you're using, you were living in the future. Like, like you basically, you're, you're saying that it's already like, this is killing cancer. It's already, it's going away. It's whatever, even though maybe physically it wasn't, but then your body started to believe it. So it actually made it true, um, which is, Yes. which is yeah. exactly how it works and and so for i just i mean i don't know i just can't get over when i hear these stories that like the power of your mind is just phenomenal oh it's absolutely amazing dr joe talks about manifestation yeah. and 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 manifestation is you know essentially dreaming dreaming of you in the future and then then actually believing and emotionally feeling that you're there that it's already mm-hmm. happened and one of the big things before I even went to Dr. Joe, I was all I could think about was I'm going to make it. I know I'm going to make it. I'm going to uh, play with my grandchildren. My kids are only right now they're uh, <laughs> yeah. eleven and nine, but I still have that ima- that dream, that imagination, and I can feel myself playing with my grandchildren. Mm. Or one of the things was walking my daughter down the aisle at her wedding. Or my son now, yeah. and I can picture it, and I can feel it, and that's what's called yeah. manifesting. And then when, when you believe it, and you and you assume it's already happened, it's happened. Mm-hmm. It's going to happen, and that and that's manifesting, um, manifesting yeah. the future, and that's yeah. what Doctor Joe says, right? Manifest it, believe it, feel it, and it's uh-huh. going to happen. Wow, <laughs> I don't even. I'm almost like lost for words. This is just so phenomenal to hear these things that i'm trying to look into and i mean that is the whole point of this podcast is to talk about stuff like this so you're you're uh you're covering all the bases this is it's just so wonderful if we could why don't we get into a couple of things that you um like the meditations or things that you kind of went through with while you were there in mexico i'm just personally really interested in in some of the things that you went through and what kind of stuff you worked on we don't have to talk about you know specifics or whatever but just kind of overall what was a lot of it you know, was mind stuff, but I don't know. You want to talk a little bit about that? I think it's, it's great. You know, a, a big thing for me, I've always had a, a fast moving mind. You know, I'm always thinking about what am I doing here? What am I doing here? You know, and then it was always hard to slow it down. And one of the first things that Dr. Joe taught us was how to breathe. Hmm. Right. And, and, um, you know, and, and harnessing your energy and bringing your energy, absorbing it. Mm-hmm. You know, we call it the yeah. quantum field. Quantum field is just pure energy, and and all I I focused on was breathing and and bringing in so much positive energy to my body, and getting rid of all the negative energy, and just the feeling that you get 
when it happens, you know, a, a lot, there's a thousand people in the room and some people are extreme. Like they, they were just kicking and screaming in a full meditation. They have to hold them down. You know, they were getting such an influx of energy uh, from the world. It was absolutely, absolutely amazing. Um, but the meditations were really like some of the, we started off with a three hour meditation, but by the end of the week, we got into a full six hour meditation, staying in one spot without having to go to the bathroom and breathing and just slowing everything down and getting into that zone. Um, wow. Yeah. It was, uh, it's a hard thing to do, but it, it really had taught me to, again, slow down and really appreciate. But one of the big techniques he really, uh, I'd like to share with you guys, it was kind of the, I'll do the Coase Notes version. It's kind of the black mm -hmm. box theory. So when you uh, get in your meditation, you're calm and hopefully your mind is, is not thinking about what you're doing today or what, what, you're, what work you need to do at work or anything like that. You know, you're in the quantum field, you're breathing, um, you're, you're strong, you're focused. Um, start dreaming, start manifesting something and, and put it in a box, you know, for example, abundance, you know, he goes, put it in a box, kick it out into this quantum field, which is just space, which is energy. And you know what? It may not come back right away, but Hey, it may come back. Right. Well, I was meditating actually yesterday and I, I kicked the abundance box. I just kicked it out into the quantum field and nothing came back, but after I got off the meditation, my phone dinged and it was, I have a rental property in mm -hmm. Saskatoon and uh, the, one of the tenants was leaving and I'm like, Oh, great. You know, it's going to take three, six, four months yeah. to get someone. They found someone within a week. They sent me an email and bam. I was like, I said to my wife, this is awesome. That is abundance yeah. right there that they found someone instantly. So that person is moving out. That person's moving in the next day. Oh, wow. And I'm like, that is absolutely yeah. amazing. Absolutely amazing. So, you know what? Um, kick it out into the quantum field, whatever it be. If you have a problem mm -hmm. in life or you have a problem with a coworker or anything, just kick it out there. And it may come back right away. And um, you know what? But it may not come back for right. a day or so. For sure. I don't know, two days. Right? I, I kick out uh, CFS, cancer-free survivor. And I kicked it out there. And this big yes came and engulfed wow. it. And I'm like, whoa, cool. And the no, he's trying to tag on to the yes to try and get into that. And uh, but we're flying around in the quantum field and we knock the no off and it's it's yeah. a yes. Right. So you know what? Yeah, it's uh, it was amazing. It's absolutely yeah, amazing. It really is. It's really interesting to me that you said you were one of those people that thought it was kind of, you know, hokey, a scam, whatever all that stuff before you weren't really into it. Um, what made that switch? Was there something specific? Was it a longer term thing? Was it that first meditation? And, and then on top of that, somebody that maybe was, is in that kind of frame of mind that you were saying you were in kind of skeptical, how would you encourage somebody to really give it a chance? You know what? It, it took me a while to get, get past my, my autonomic system, I would mm -hmm. say, right? Everything that was um, ingrained in my head, everything um, that I believed in, you know what? When something drastic happens in your life, like I had, uh, I had to change right. everything, right? And it wasn't, let's keep the status quo because the status quo was cause right. cancer, right? So that's what happens with a lot of people, you know, it's, it's a wake up call. And, and it woke me up and I said to myself, you know what, it's going to be hard, but I'm going to do everything in the opposite I did previously mm -hmm. for the most part. Right. And, and it took a lot of work. Um, I did with the body talk. One of the things that they provided was, you know, a, a healing room, you know, you create your own healing room, you go in there and uh, do whatever you create, whatever you want. Right. I'm, I'm a sci-fi guy. So I had a Star Trek bed and tricorder was healing me, things like that. But, uh, don't be afraid to change. Don't be afraid to do something different, right? What's it going to hurt, right? If something's not going right in the first place, try something mm. different. Like it's, it's not going to hurt. And uh, if you take the time and you focus, um, 
you know, you can change, you can change your life. Yeah. What is your daily, well, two questions, I guess. Are you meditating more than once a day or, um, and if not, it's just daily or however often you do it, what's your practice look like on a, like regularly? What kind of, kind of things are you, cause there's so many different areas of meditation that you can get into. Absolutely. So, uh, one of the, I do a doc, I have Dr. Joe Dispenza's meditations downloaded on my phone. My wife does. And so she'll say, Hey, let's go do a meditation. And, and sometimes it's a 20 minute meditation. Sometimes it's 45, sometimes it's an hour and a half. Right. Um, so we'll do that once a day when I'm out and about, you know, if I have the time, I'll just breathe. Breathing is really important with, when Dr. Joe says, so I'll do a lot of breathing and, and the third part of it is this, I do this all the time is I'll just go into my healing room in my head. Yeah. If I've got nothing going on or I'm sitting in my truck waiting for my son at hockey, I'll just go in my healing room. I'll go in. I, uh, I'll tell you, I have a, I'm a sci-fi guy. So I have a star Wars kind of room, a star Trek right. bed. Um, I, all my organs are at a certain area. They hang out. It's like a spa area. And I go in and I talk to them. How's it going guys? How's your day? You know? And, uh, you know, what's new, you know, are we working hard? I know we still got a bit of work to do. What, what can I do? What can you do? How can we help each other kind of thing? And, and that's my healing room. Right. And then a lot of times I'll invite, uh, say for example, if my, my son's having a problem at school, I'll, I'll invite him into my healing room. Right. And we'll kind of discuss what's going on. I'll invite my wife, I'll invite my whole family. Um, I do a lot of that too. So, um, it, it's, I do a lot of meditation when you think about right. it every day. Cause that is uh, like in its, you know, essence, that's what, that's what you're doing with your healing room thing for sure. Right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. And then I have the quantum field just, uh, just above my, my sci-fi building yeah. kind of thing. And I just, uh, I'll just, you know, it's so funny. I'll, I'll just leave my body behind and I'll just, my, I'll take my energy and I'll just fly mm -hmm. around in the quantum field and, and absorb as much positive energy yeah. as you want to speak a little bit to that because you've said that several times and i know what you're talking about but maybe other people that are new to this or whatever uh the quantum field i guess uh, to your knowledge uh, as best as you as best as you can you know describe that a little bit so everybody's on the same page yeah I, i'm not an, i'm definitely not an expert For at sure. it but uh dr joe says we are 99 percent yeah. energy when, when you look at a cell it's 99% energy and then 1% matter. And that's the way the whole world is structured is a cell because the whole world is made of cells is energy, right? And, and our energy kind of tells us what to do, predicts what we can do, uh, it affects us in every way. And the quantum field is where you can, uh, is the, the almighty space source, God, you could say, um, where you can absorb as much positive energy mm -hmm. as you want. And that's where I go and I'll, you know, I'll act like Superman. I'll just fly around and, and, um, I get hit by lightning bolts of energy mm. all the time of positive yeah. energy. I don't, I, I, I negative energy and go somewhere yeah. else, <laughs> but, um, but that's kind of what I do. That's kind of my understanding of the quantum field It's just unlimited positive sure. energy are you a uh, religious man yeah or would you have considered yourself one you know yes and no yeah yes yeah i would say so you know i've always i've always believed in god god is the ultimate source and and even dr joe said he's the ultimate source mm -hmm. of energy right? so you can call it whatever you want but energy, yeah energy, i guess right? when i say and, religious because yeah, yeah. there's two different things religion is kind of more of an organized you know thing and then there's spirituality it's all kind of the same or whatever but um were you like i say like christian or something like that like before or or you said believing in god did you ever practice a religion or now it's just more like you're tuned into all this other stuff and it doesn't really need a name i guess so you know we went to we went to church we pray with the kids every night we went to church now and then uh, is it something we practice um uh, you know every day kind of thing no you know, but, uh, uh, you know, with busy lives, you know, yeah. it's hard, hard to fit it all in, but, um, yeah, I wouldn't say I was, you know, uh, devout or anything like that, but yeah, it's definitely something for I'm sure. Really and then it's, uh, at least from, from a, you know, outside point of view, it seems like you've, uh, you've taken what 
essentially religion is all about and and i mean you're fully immersed in it uh, that's most mm-hmm. likely not yes. what people yeah. would always call it it doesn't really matter what you call it but what you're saying you know about god or universal consciousness or the feel whatever you want to again you know term yeah. it um that's what you're you're involved in you know what comes to mind when you're talking about this stuff you have a really active imagination <laughs> yeah <do>. and and <laughs> but like you've I would assume put a lot of work into that because that's why all this like even it's not just your imagination but like your healing room and stuff like that right you, you know what it's people have a tough time with it i've always been right. a dreamer right now now i've learned how to put dream into mm-hmm. reality and 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 use it to manifest mm-hmm. the future and it's it's an absolutely amazing tool uh, again like i said it, it'll change your life and um if uh some people can't do it. It takes practice though. My wife had a, a tough time doing it and just dreaming and, um, you know, the brain gets in the way, your, your history, mm-hmm. your, the way you've grown up gets in the way. And you know what? It's uh, it takes time. That's why the meditation is so important to learn, to slow your mm-hmm. brain down, slow it down a bit, you know, to get all that garbage out and focus on what mm-hmm. you need to focus on. So that's what meditation is. It was a big thing for me. Just slow it down, get focused, and let's just focus on maybe one or two things that we really yeah. need focusing on, right? Because sometimes people can't get there because there's so many external things in their life that are just mm-hmm. pushing on them. And, and to get past that, it's really yeah. hard. We'll wrap it up relatively soon but before we do that i want because we have you on here um is there anything you want to talk about what, what you went through your like where you went to get things done treatment stuff like that um for somebody if this reaches anybody that may or may know somebody in in a similar situation or anything like that you have you have this you know you have the stage so whatever you want to talk about about that if there's anything you want to share go ahead uh, yeah you know what just to finish off dr dr cleef is an amazing guy in vienna austria and his um um, his, his protocol is, is getting a lot more well-known. It's having a lot more success than traditional chemotherapy. Um, so he's having a lot of success with it percentages wise. I don't know the exact percentage, but it's, it's a lot better prognosis than uh, conventional chemotherapy. Definitely look him up. He's a, he's a great guy. He really genuinely cares about you and wants to save, save your life. One of the big things he does is, is hyperthermia. And uh, that's not hypo, but Mm -hmm. hyper, it's induced fever. So uh, one week of the treatment was um, induced fever where you go to his fever clinic, you you induce, I don't even know the product was called, he injects you with something and then you start getting the effects of fever. You start shivering for the first couple hours. My temperature I think was up to a hundred degrees, 101 degrees. Um, You get a little nausea, you get a little headache, but he says, fever in Canada. He goes, what do you guys do when you get a fever? Well, we take Advil, we take Tylenol. He goes, fever is awesome. It's, it's your body's natural response to getting rid of foreign uh, particles in your body, something that's not there. But what do we do? We nullify it by taking Advil and Tylenol, right? You know, Hey, keep your fever, watch your temperature. It gets a little out of hand, then take it. But, uh, let your fever work through, right? And and his whole process down there was from a natural past standpoint and pharmaceutical was to increase your body's immunity mm. and then hit it hard with fever and get your body to get rid of the cancer. And it's a very it's a very good um, um, protocol. And you can read more of it too as well. My wife's book, Day the Cancer Quit, it's on Amazon. Um, it's all detailed in there. And then if not, you can go to Dr. Cleese's website to see a little more anyways, it will just give you an, another option in regards to uh, uh, another cancer treatment. And then again, like I said before, on top of it, you have to do the body talk, the Joe Dispenza work, the mind and body work. You have to put it all together and that will give you the best chance of survival when it comes to cancer or, you know, any types of changes in your life, any type yeah. of disease, because you can change it with right. your, mind, your body. You put it all together. It's I think it's a win win situation. Mm-hmm. Hey everybody, thanks so much for listening to the episode. I hope you enjoyed this one. It's the start of this incredible season of of guests and stories and and just information. Um, So again, thanks just so much for listening. Uh, 
one more thing. I mean, I talked about it earlier, but these blue light glasses, I mean, you gotta get them. All right, you gotta get them. Harrison 10. That's all you gotta use to get 10% off. Naturalacademy.com. That's right. And if you wanna follow Terry Ma, uh, well, I guess not follow Terry Ma. If you wanna read more about Terry Ma's story, his wife, uh, Christiane, she wrote a book, which we talked about briefly. It's called The Day the Cancer Quit, a true story of surviving stage four pancreatic cancer. It's available basically everywhere. I think you find books, uh, you can find it on Amazon. It's uh, reasonably priced and it's gonna be worth every penny. All right, so you can head on over there and grab it. Uh, it's by Christiane Ma, all right? The Day the Cancer Quit. You wanna check that one out? I gotta, I'll have the links to everything down in the show notes and on the website. And of course, like I said earlier, if you wanna support the show, if you want a little more from the show, head on over to patreon.com forward slash let's talk about life podcast. Again, that's all gonna be down below and on the website too, but make sure to check that out and uh, and you can become a patron and you're going to get every episode a week early and those extra mini episodes. So you're getting an extra episode of the Let's Talk About Life podcast every week. So if that's something you want, make sure to head on over to patreon.com forward slash Let's Talk About Life podcast. In the meantime, I hope that you are enjoying your day. I hope you have a great rest of the day, rest of the week. Remember to keep loving life. We'll chat with you next time. For more information about this episode or the show itself, head on over to harrisonkingofficial.com. There you'll be able to find the show notes, transcriptions, and videos for every episode. Be sure to follow us on Instagram at Let's Talk About Life Pod. Now get out there and have a deep, meaningful conversation in your own life. We'll chat with you next time. <laughs>